Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, please email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly. Email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. I don't care how niche your tastes may be or how big a connoisseur of independent brands you claim to be. But I will guess that unless you specifically navigated to this video searching for this model, the 2015 28-piece DeWitt Academia Mathematical was not on your radar. This timepiece is awesome. And just in case you happen to be math-averse, don't worry, this is simple. You read it from top to bottom, it's digital, it jumps. Got it? Good. In rose gold, I have to say this watch differs more from its stated dimensions than any watch I've ever measured. DeWitt claims a diameter, for this case, of 42.5 millimeters. Well, at the outermost extremity, I actually measured it at 41.3, and they claim 11.9 millimeters of thickness, but I measured a beefy 14.7. So the watch from lug tip to lug tip is 50.4 millimeters and somewhat oddly shaped. That said, there is a lot to love here. Maybe a little bit too much to explain in a short format video, but I'm going to try. One last note, the spacing between the lugs is 21 millimeters, not the 23 that DeWitt claims. All right, zooming out, the watch wears quite easily on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist. It's not the thinnest watch, but it's relatively short across the wrist. It should be bigger. As a roughly 50 millimeter watch lug to lug, I would have expected to say, don't even bother if your wrist is smaller than 15 centimeters, but I actually think you could pull this off on a 14 centimeter circumference wrist because those lugs are so dramatically curved. It really doesn't look awkward. That said, it is quite a bit thicker than claimed, which means you're probably not gonna get a cup up and over this thing. A cup on a jacket maybe, but not a cuff on a dress shirt or a shirt of any kind. Now taking a quick look at the hardware and the software, we have medium rectangular scale alligator leather. We rarely see the medium size. It's usually large, but here it's medium sized. It's black, matte black. It's really anthracite somewhere between black and gray. And then it has a folded edge that is as sheer as a cut edge, but it is a folded edge, you can see, and then a monotone stitch on the underside. High horology indeed. We've got a DeWitt factory strap in brand new condition, and you can see it is round scale, small scale gator on the bottom. The point of doing gator on both sides, as F.P. Jorn knows, is that you get a longer lasting strap. More expensive, but this watch is worth it. Remember, this watch had a retail price of almost 200,000 US dollars. Taking a quick look at the buckle, it's a simple piece, rose gold pin buckle, DeWitt logo, and on the underside you can see it is rose gold to match the case. It's got a nice teardrop profile when viewed on the side. And then we have a relatively complex case form. The watch is a little bit pot-bellied, I'm not gonna lie, it's got this swell at the bottom that's bulbous and circumferential, and I'm not quite sure what's going on there, other than my best guess being that this is a highly modular complication, and you can see due to the depth of the wheels that display the time, the base movement actually sits quite low inside the case, which is why the crown is so close to the case back and so remote from the bezel. So that's what I suspect is going on. This is trying to fit the base movement inside the case. Now you might notice that there's a sort of blacked out colonnade along the sides. Jerome de Witt, who founded the company in 2003. Well, it grew out of an old collaboration with Cédric Jonaire, but officially it became De Witt back in 2003. De Witt himself claims lineage to almost every noble family and royal family that's ever existed in Europe, most notably the family of Napoleon Bonaparte. So this imperial colonnade is a reference to Jérôme De Witt, the watchmaker's family heritage. Now you can see there's a combination of media blasted hollows inside the lugs and then polishing externally. And while the case is massive, the lugs are actually quite elegant. You can see we have a DeWitt branded crown with that same colonnade here in the form of knurling. And then we move around to the dial side and you can see we have a couple of superimposed sapphires. And then we have geared time displays. It is a jumping digital watch, a lot like the F.P. Journe Vagabondage 2, which is jumping minutes and jumping hours. It's also a little bit like the Lange Zeitwerk 
and it's very much in that vein. It's rare to see this type of display, and it's even less common to see all of the numerals on the dial all at once. Here we have a couple of carousels of numerals that are on three different planes, actually four if you look carefully. You have two digits for the hour and then two digits for the minutes. And in case you're wondering, yes, you can actually put the watch in a manual set mode and just sort of play with it, which is a lot of fun. I mean, after all, come on, that's where the action is, guys. You're going to want to demonstrate this to your friends. And while you can manually wind this watch, it's an automatic winder. It uses DeWitt's own automatic base. He calls this the DW0101, and as you could see, it's nicely made. They even go bold with a couple of sharp interior angles built into the bridges. So the attention to detail is very good. I would say it's finished roughly to the standard you'll find on an Audemars Piguet mainstream watch. Not the jumbos, not the high horology pieces but the Royal Oaks, the offshores, it's finished like that, like the Code 1159s. It's a high horology movement with a combination of manual and automated finishing techniques. But what finishing alone doesn't speak to is, is the quality of the architecture. And you can see here, there's an open barrel bridge. We have this lovely set of train bridges leading down to the escapement. It is really quite attractive. It's a 30 joule movement. It's free sprung for durability. It beats away at 21,600 vibrations per hour and it's got a 48 hour automatic winding power reserve. This watch, which is also known as Concept Watch Number 4, was one of the launch platforms for this base automatic movement from David. It uses a flat hairspring and you can see it is nicely made with a lot of the uh, subsidiary bridges featuring those sharp inward angles and all of the screw heads beautifully black polished as well as the rotor center in the middle. So there is a lot to love here. All of it's 30 meters water resistant, so it's not an aquatic timepiece, but it is exceptional. Our independent brand we rarely discuss and a model that almost no one has heard of, there is a reason why this watch cost almost 200 grand and when you see it and handle it and watch it in action, you understand. Reach out to tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.